Unit 5, Medical Terminology and Body Organization. And so this unit is really, I think, well done in the book. I think it gives kind of the basic idea of med terms and sort of basic body organization. Um, again, this is sort of just the starting point for this. So medical terminology is the language of healthcare. And so for those of you um, pursuing nursing school, continuing on in this path, I think a medical terminology class is a really good thing to take to kind of understand and make sure you understand the language of healthcare. So when um, you know, there's something you may not know, you can kind of break apart the words and sort of make sure you are understanding what other healthcare providers and um, things are, are saying. So, med terms and body organization. So medical terminology is really just piecing together um, different parts of the word, so prefixes and suffixes, to come um, forth with a a word that has a specific meaning. So we'll talk about this in more detail. But um, so you'll see in the center of your screen here, so hepat meaning liver and ology meaning study of. And so really, you know, hepatology is going to be the study of the liver. So prefixes and suffixes. So there's many medical words have common beginnings. And it, this is so, so important because what happens is you've um, <laughs> probably seen in, if you've been in ha experienced healthcare, how many different words there are. And it, it really is its own language. But if you can really break it down into knowing common prefixes and common suffixes, you can figure out what um, the word is maybe not knowing what it is, just breaking it into its different parts. So prefixes are the ones at the beginning of the word, whereas suffixes are at the end of the word. So those are um, probably going to be on your quiz. So common abbreviations, so table 5-4 in your book, uh, abbreviations change frequently, but you'll see the ones on the, on the right-hand side of your screen here. I'm sorry, it's not a better image, but these are frequently used abbreviations, and so you'll see, especially in whatever environment you're working in, abbreviations that are used pretty frequently. So making sure that you really understand these is really important. Um, so abbreviations and their meanings are in list, oh, excuse me. Okay, so abbreviations and their meanings are in Table 5-4, and they've been grouped together for easier learning. So a lot of this is just going to be practice and exposure, just like medical terminology, but getting used to what these different um, common abbreviations are. So each facility has a list of abbreviations that may and may not be used. So um, there are some abbreviations that are not appropriate because they cause confusion. So something um, in, you know, um, the gastric system versus the cardiovascular system and so people will um, healthcare providers will come up with different abbreviations but when they are used in multiple settings and have different meanings it can be confusing so there's often these do not use lists um, every three months so make sure you're checking that regularly any sort of communication between you know administration and you as an employee it's really important to know where you seek out that information a lot of times you'll get updated emails or there'll be um, memos posted near time clocks things like that but making sure that that is your job to make sure that you are um, using abbreviations appropriately so again and we'll talk about this again in future chapters but um, uh, a patient's chart is a legal document. It can be used in court. So anything we're putting in there, you, you have to make sure that it is the correct terminology, you're using the correct abbreviations, because again, it is a legal document. So health. So health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. And so, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. This is um, a definition by the World Health Organization. And so oftentimes we think about health as the absence of disease. But you think about somebody who has diabetes, for example. That's a chronic illness. Once you're diagnosed, you'll have diabetes for the rest of your life. But they can live a very um, healthy life. You know, they can, you know, be very well maintained and still be considered healthy so it's not necessarily an absence of disease it's really just a bigger picture of physical mental and social well-being um, so disease is any change from healthy state so again that person will have a chronic disease so it's a change from a healthy state so medical science is the study of disease and its effects on the human body. So, you know, the disease we talk about, you know, a lot of you are in anatomy and physiology. Um, the, the disease process of the body is going to be pathophysiology. So you'll get that in nursing school. So the effects are easier to understand with a clear mental picture of normal and properly functioning body. So again, you're going to take anatomy and physiology. You're going to understand normal structure, normal function before, and then that'll give you um, 
a way to sort of really understand a diseased function and how that how that plays with the body system. So um, you also need to understand the organization of the body. So anatomic terms, so this is um, basically anatomy, which a lot of you I, I know are taking it as well. So um, it's most easily understood and learned if it's studied in an orderly manner. And so that's how anatomy classes are breaking up. Anatomy and physiology classes are in an orderly manner where you're learning about, you know, different functions of the body at the same time. So there's special terms used to describe the relationship of one body part to another. So again, these things are really, really important so that we're all on the same page. We're all speaking the same language. If we say, you know, the elbow is proximal to the wrist, we know what that means, you know, so, so we'll talk about those in more detail. So on the right hand side here you'll see this is anatomic position. So we talk about things in terms of anatomic terms and this is very, very important for every aspect of healthcare, but um, making sure that we're all on the same page about what specifically we're talking about. So make sure you're thinking about anatomic position when you're describing relationship of body parts. So describing something to another part of the body, you will be describing it in an an based on anatomic position. So you're always going to want to position the body this way. So again, um, structure and function are so closely related as you'll see in anatomy and physiology. So it's really important for the body to function prop properly. It needs to, to be structured properly. You need to make sure that if you're feeding somebody, which we'll talk about, you're making sure that they're in a good anatomic position. They're not with their head tilted. They're not, you know, leaning away because that's, that's, um, their function is obviously going to be inhibited when their the, the structure is, um, off. So some descriptive terms, and these are in your book as well. So it's just getting used to understanding these different um, aspects and how things are described. So make sure, again, a really important thing, you know, you'll see here is uh, proximal, so nearest to the point of attachment to the body, whereas distal is farthest from the point of attach or attachment. So lateral, away from the midline, uh, medial toward the midline. So just getting used to these different um, descriptive terms, and there's great graphs in your book. So points of attachment, so you've probably heard this before, but arms and legs are called extremities of the body. So proximal and distal, so also something that's maybe on your quiz. Um, two terms used to describe the relationship between parts of extremities and their points of attachment to the body. So proximal being closest to the point of attachment, as whereas distal is furthest away from the point of attachment. So um, just kind of recognizing what that means in terms of relationships to parts of the body. So when it's closer to the point of attachment, that's going to be proximal, whereas distal is furthest away from the point of attachment. So abdominal regions, so just kind of understanding that there are, they're divided into four quadrants um, with the umbilicus at the center, and this figure is in your book as well, figure 5-5. Five, five. And so this is just really important. You'll hear um, nurses saying they're, they you know, have bowel sounds in all four quadrants, or this is used also um, to as a descriptive term. So if somebody says, my stomach hurts, that's a lot less specific than saying, I have a pain, and them pointing to, you know, somewhere in the right lower quadrant. So when you go to, you know, they say I have a pain right here, you go back to your nurse and say, the patient's complaining of pain, at an 8 out of 10, in the right lower quadrant. That's going to give a lot more specific objective information about what may be going on with that patient. So organization of the body. So all parts of the body are interdependent. And so we talk about body systems, but you um, really, they're, they're interdependent upon each other. So when you, you know, you have a failure of one system, it will ultimately have implications for every other system in the body. So for example, if someone's kidneys fail, it'll ultimately impact the cardiovascular system. It'll ultimately impact every other system in the body. So just being aware that these, we talk about them in systems just because it's easier to understand and to see how it's organized, but ultimately they, they are interdependent on each other. So cell, you may remember this from your biology class, um, is the basic unit of the body. Um, groups of similar cells are organized into tissues, so it's, you're going to move progressively up this chain. So you move from cell to tissues, and then different tissues form organs, and then organs are organized into systems that perform body functions. So we'll talk about this in more detail, but it's just kind of, it's going from the simplest level of organization up to the most complex. So the cardiovascular circulatory system. So the purpose of this system is really transporting materials around the body. So making sure that we're, our um, cells' tissues are getting oxygen that they need, they're um, 
as that's carried through the blood system and then that that blood system is also carrying away waste products so carrying oxygen and nutrients to cells um, energy and essentially oxygen and then carrying waste products away so often in the form of carbon dioxide that we're going to get rid of so part of the immune system that provides protective cells and chemicals to fight against infections and protect against future infections so this is really talking about your white blood cells that protective immune system function uh, also part of the cardiovascular system so the respiratory system, so it's, it, we talk about this as a separate system, but it's really so interdependent on the cardiovascular system. So you'll often hear cardiopulmonary, and pulmonary is another um, term for respiratory, because again, the blood goes through the, through the right side of the heart and then into the lungs before it even gets back into the left side of the heart. So they're so completely interdependent. But the respiratory system, the purpose is bringing in oxygen and eliminating carbon dioxide. So the nutrients plus oxygen is going to give energy plus water plus the byproduct of carbon dioxide, which we're going to um, breathe out, excrete out. So gastrointestinal is the digestive system. So again, these are really, really basic descriptions of these. You know, we'll go into more detail in later chapters, and as you go through anatomy physiology, you'll have a lot more um, complex conversations about these systems. But just basically, um, the purpose of these is, is digestion, uh, transporting food. So again, remember we use it for energy for um, for all the cells and tissues in our body, um, absorbing nutrients, and then eliminating waste. So another, another way to sort of get rid of waste in our body. So the integumentary system, so this is our skin, really. So protecting the body from injury. And it's amazing, we, we don't understand how important our skin is until we have a wound or until we have a break in that intact skin. So intact skin is one of the most important things that keep us um, from infections. So you, you'll see that as soon as somebody has a wound, the, you know, the risk for infection increases. Um, so we, it, it, the purpose really is protecting the body, not only from injury, but also against infection. Another really important function is regulating body temperature and then also eliminating some waste. So, so um, some waste through perspiration is also another small role of this integumentary system. So the muscular system, so this protects the organs by forming body walls and the walls of some organs. So some organs are also muscular. Um, it assists in the movement by changing position of bones at the joints. So um, you'll see this picture schematic on the right. This is a very, very um, kind of basic structure here. When you get into anatomy and physiology, you will go in re really a lot more depth in terms of all the muscles in the body, but kind of just understanding the purpose there. So assisting in movement and also used as protection. So the skeletal system, so this supports the body system. This is what really gives us the structure of our body. Uh, it protects the body parts, uh, produces blood cells. So again, in the bone marrow, that, that's when you're going to have your, your red blood cells, your white blood cells, your platelets produced. So that's a really important function of the system. And then it acts as a lever in movement. So again, skeletal, musculos, musculoskeletal, you'll often hear, because again, they're so interdependent, where the, the muscle's going to contract, and that's what's going to help lift um, the skeletal system for movement. So the nervous system, this coordinates body functions. Um, so the sensory system is often spoken about in its own system, but it is cons it is considered, it is part of the nervous system itself. Okay, so it's you'll hear sensory system, but that's a small part of the bigger nervous system. So again, all your sense organs, your eyes, your ears, your taste, your touch, your smell. So really, how do you navigate your environment? How do you navigate your surroundings? It's going to be part of the sensory system. And then again, uh, the nervous system, system is really coordinating all these different body functions. So, you know, you'll have um, a t sense of touch, for example. So, you're um, you're over a hot stove. You're you know immediately your pain receptors send a message to your brain saying hot, lift your hand, and so it's lifted off. So, coordinating that body function so that we're not causing pain or harm to the body. So urinary system, managing fluids and electrolytes in the body, which is so, so important. Um, and then eliminating liquid waste, so another way that we eliminate waste from the bodies. So you'll see the schematic on the right here. So really basically the kidneys, the ureters, the bladder, um, and then the urethra. So we'll talk about this in more detail as well.